no need to ask He's a smooth operator Binden aiming concept. This was invented by Glenn Bilden. It's the guy who founded Trijicon back in the 90s. And the concept is you have an optic with a very bright center point in it, even though it's magnified. Then you just keep both your eyes open to aim at it. Before you freak out, this is empty. It is, it is now at least. Um, but yeah, you, you keep both eyes open. And then when you're aiming through the optic, your right eye is going to see this super bright reticule and your left eye is gonna see your target. Then your brain is gonna overlay the two images. So it's supposed to give you the advantage of a magnified optic and a red dot at the same time. But we're gonna see how well does that actually work. So we have a uh, ACOG here. This is a um, TA-11, the green one. And then this is a Credo 1 to 8 and we'll shoot it on 1X for the purposes of this test. And this is a Holosun red dot HS-402A. Yeah, so that's like a two MOA dot and like I said, this will be on the highest magnif or highest brightness, which isn't honestly that bright. No. I'm and, glad uh, we're not uh, on Arrakis with this. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be using the same rifle, this 13.7 AR here with can and a mil spec trigger. And these are all, our zeros aren't gonna be perfect because we're gonna be swapping these optics every single time. Um, but it's, it's gonna be good enough for this kind of test. 20 yards, we're thinking we'll hit paper. Yeah, but we wanna use the same rifle to get good, consistent data. The drill we're gonna do is just a Mozambique drill, uh, two targets, 10 yards apart. We're 20 yards from the targets, two to the chest, two to the chest, one to the head, one to the head. And the way we're gonna be shooting this to get rid of any kind of warm-up bias, because if we all start with the red dot and then shoot the LPVO last, we've, we've run this multiple times, so by the time we're at the LPVO, we're gonna have an advantage. So you're gonna be doing red dot, LPVO, ACOG. I'm doing LPVO, ACOG, red dot. You're doing ACOG, red dot, LPVO. And when we add all that data together, it should remove any kind of warm-up bias. So we're switching optics nine times? Yes. Holy moly. I'm glad it's not my rifle. Yeah, <laughs> so let's give it a go. Okay, no one likes looking at charts, so I'll try to make this quick. Uh, each optic ran the drill three times with three different shooters. The ACOG was 1.5% faster than the LPVO on the 1X setting, and the red dot was 17.5% faster than the ACOG. So there's the raw data. Now let's take a look at it from the shooter's perspectives. There's weeb shit on here? Okay. Oh, my dust cover? Yeah. Yeah, that's old. That's from Conti Collection. <laughs> Are we live? Yeah. Okay. Keep it. <laughs> so... We have the targets, just to prove that we're actually shooting at something. We're not really concerned about the actual hits, except with the occluded gun sight, which we're going to get into. Otherwise, like, we're not worried like Alpha Charlie, whatever. It's just to give us something to aim at, to put it on the clock. So, one thing that I found interesting while we were shooting was the distance and the difference with the LPVO versus the ACOG. So, with the ACOG, we have a fixed powered optic at 3.5 times magnification, and it was felt slow to shoot, but we still had good hit times. Now, as we look at the LPVO, we're sitting there at that variable optic, but the one-time magnification, but it was so busy that it was frustrating to shoot. Dude, that 1X sucks. <laughs> I thought it was okay. When I was done shooting, I checked to make sure it was on 1X because it didn't feel like it. 531. Yeah, those shit. I do not like that LPVO. No. Holy shit. That's hard. The LPVOs felt slow. The ACOGs felt faster than we thought they would. The times on both were about the same. The red dot was faster than all of them. So, as we were shooting with the ACOG, one thing that I found interesting was Craig and myself both shot our slowest times transitioning with that ACOG. Now, Kevin, who shoots with the ACOG much more than we do currently, he was actually faster. So with that, looking back at what I figured would be, the red dot had the fastest transition time. So when you're looking at it with just a 
center dot and you're going with this and you're hitting those targets, it was so much easier to do. 456. So to get into the OEG problems, so something I've heard, and I've read, I've read this on like ARFCOM and heard people talk about it, where they'll keep a lens cap on the front of their ACOG to flip shut if they have to go indoors for something. That way you can use it like an occluded eye gun sight like the old Armisen OEGs. The Armisen OEGs you'd zero with both eyes open, so I think it works the way you use those. The ACOGs it doesn't, because I think most people are zeroing this with one eye shut. Because he threw them wide left, Kevin threw them wide right. I had them fairly centered, but this is all stuff you have to test. And it's just, it's not something I would recommend. I see something over here. Whoa! Right? <laughs> I think I know why the people, it, that's not a good idea. That is, four, four, unaccept two. That is unacceptable at 20 yards. That's yeah. two though. Four, four, Wait. two. That is way off because the space of your eyes, and I have the closest eyes together to everyone here. You might have throw the closest off. together eyes on the planet, bud. I, you know what? With your wide eyes, if you shot, maybe you'll be out here. I look like Sid from Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> These aren't red dot replacements. Nothing, nothing here really works. Not been to naming concept. Not occluded eye shooting. So, with the way the market is now and the weight of the micro dots and stuff, I'd go ahead and put a micro dot on top of or offset on a rifle with a magnified optic. I think it's totally worth it. I was, I'm perfectly at home shooting 1X on my LPVO. It's a Night Force Attacker 1 to 8. I was not at home shooting on Kevin's Trijicon Credo 1 to 8. This just felt weird to me, alien, whatever you want to call it. I still have an offset dot, even though I like shooting my LPVO at 1X. And the way the prices are on these things, it's like, okay, so this is a $1,200 scope. You can spend like $300 on getting the piggyback red dot set up. Or you can spend $2,800 on a scope and still wind up spending like 300 bucks on some sort of offset or piggyback red dot. There's an aspect of diminishing returns here you need to be really careful about when you're choosing what to spend your money on. All right, so this is our bonus content. I've heard of people who are like police officers out on the street occluding their red dots so they don't have to worry about the brightness as much because these can get a little bit finicky out in the real world in terms of having the right brightness level so they keep it occluded. What I'm wondering is, are you going to see the same offset we saw at the ACOG shooting these occluded? So I'm going to shoot one bare dot and then one occluded, and we'll just take a quick look at the hits. Do you right? Yep. Stand by. Four point five two. All right. So for this one, just so you can see it. We occluded the lens with tape, which I imagine is how people who do this are doing it in the real world, unless they have some sort of crazy 302 con snaps fucking lens cover. Shoot red? Yep. Stand by. 4%. I think we're discovering something interesting here. Five alpha, one mic. <laughs> I pulled the mic, so I'm going to call it right now. I pulled that one. But, occluded eye gun sh sight shooting with the pistol, where you zero it with both eyes open, and it's 1x, works. For whatever reason, your brain, it both eyes. your brain, it just doesn't work with the ACOG, the magnification in there. I don't know. I don't get it. I wouldn't trust it. But with the pistol, I mean, I can hit where I'm shooting, no problem, with an occluded gun sight on the pistol. It works fine. So, not bullshit on a pistol, at least, with a 1X optic. All right, so, once again, we highly, highly, highly recommend getting, like, a piggyback dot or an offset red dot. If you're allowed to modify your own gear because it's your personal gear or a lenient department, whatever, you should do it. Price-wise, it's worth it. Capability-wise, it's absolutely worth it. Yeah, and if, if you're stuck with that, like, it's something issued, you can't modify it, you're just going to have to train your way through that turd. It's, it's going to suck, but you can get good with it. And then, me personally, I wouldn't recommend like just a red dot. I think you gotta have magnification. If it's like a breacher specific rifle, sure. Or a shotgun, a pistol, something you're not typically gonna expect to shoot past 50 yards anyway, I mean. Yeah. If it's a 5.56 rifle though, you should probably have magnification. Yeah, and I'm gonna talk real fast too. Make sure you just train. I don't know how often we have to, God damn it, I hate this fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure if we're gonna drive this in, you train. There is nothing more crucial that you can do aside from buying the proper gear to supply for yourself, your team, or your family, but you need to make sure you're training. The amount of money that we spend on this to look cool, let's make sure that it's functional and usable. 
Yeah. Any I don't even look cool. Any any three of us here who's like, you know, we'll just say a mediocre shooter because I don't want to suck myself off on camera, but we're a mediocre shooter and you could hand us any one of these optics and we're probably going to do better than one of you who argues on Reddit for 12 hours a day about the best optic but you haven't been to the range in a year. Yeah. Oh, by the way, while I was up here fidgeting on camera, I moved your backup iron one click to the right as a treat. Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> I don't think they're zeroed. <laughs> if he trains, you'll find that out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't move my left foot. Fucking brassoids. Brassol. I'm saving money! Brassol. <laughs> Time for the brass facts. I guess I can't touch. 